Um, good, good afternoon, everyone. I'm glad these microphones seem to be loud because I've lost my voice the last couple of days. So. Hooray. I've, uh, <laughs> promised, I've, I've promised Mr. Raymer that I would not yell at him today. Okay. Um, first item on the agenda is uh, uh, the first selectman's office. I'm going to ask for a motion to go in executive session. Yeah. So moved. And I would second that motion. Uh, for the benefit of the other people present, this should not be a long item. Uh, we'll need to excuse you, but it will be uh, fairly brief, I think. For those of you who don't know, July 1st is the beginning of the uh, new fiscal year uh, for the town of Greenwich. So, HD1 Health Department, Caroline, welcome. Um, my first question for you is, didn't we have the same thing? Yes, we, we did. Yes, we did. First and foremost? Okay, it's on. It's, it's on. on. Uh, yes, we did. This was, this is a new uh, patient monitoring for us. Uh, so, this is an additional $500 from the State Department of Public Health. Okay. Um, So, so it is on a per patient basis? I'm sorry? It's on a per patient basis, the monitoring? Pro probation? Per, 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 per patient. patient. Per patient, yes. If you have any extra cough drops, I could Yes, per, per patient. Okay. Yes. Um, You're talking to the right we, department. We plan, on, <laughs> we plan on getting another phone. Okay, great. With, with that. Okay. Um, any other questions? To Peter, if I can. Uh, Peter, um, I, I just hate the idea that we bring Carolyn back here for uh, I just hate the idea that we bring Carolyn back here for an authorization to use a $500 grant. Um, I'm wondering, uh, is this not something that we could be covering in the standing resolutions next year to do a, an authorization for the PHEP grants uh, that the department is authorized to be accepting and using and applying? Do you selectively want to do this? Or no, no, I, mean, I, I, uh, I will approve this now, but I mean, going forward, uh, maybe uh, the law committee, whoever's on the law committee next time around should be. We could change the resolution or we could present it for her. Yeah, well, that too. Uh, maybe we don't necessarily need Carolyn here to explain all of these at, at a $500 item. I just thought maybe we could avoid having to be entertaining the item at all um, if it was in the standing resolutions. Especially <laughs> these, because these are $500 a pop, you know. We've never had these kind of plans. Can we do it? Change it. Yeah, we'll, we can, are, you know, we'll address it during the budget cycle next year. Okay. Or this year. Okay. Thank you. Make a note so we remember. That's all I have. Yeah. Okay. Leslie, question? Mm. Really? Okay. Thank you, Karen. Uh, next time on the agenda is NW1, Nathaniel Witherall. $580,000 transfer. Gentlemen, you want to come on up? And Alan, how are you? Um, rolling up, but if, if you're about to leave, I got a question for you. Okay. As we're going to do, Nathaniel Witherall here. Um, just so I understand, and, and these gentlemen will talk more about it, but the five hundred thousand, five hundred eighty thousand dollars, is out of overtime, correct? Or it was they want to fund five hundred eighty thousand dollars back into overtime, and this is for fiscal year fifteen. The, the overtime is about five hundred thousand dollars, and then some of the other items are professional fees. Okay, but then we're talking about fiscal Temporary. year fifteen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, wasn't the total line item for that object code seven hundred five thousand dollars? For overtime. For overtime. I mean, what I'm getting at is they're asking for five hundred eighty thousand dollars, and yet the budget was seven hundred five. Isn't that a pretty excessive amount? Yes. Okay. So we'll he's going to get. He's going to run the appropriation yep. state. Okay. Seven hundred five three twenty two. Yep. Um, I'm sorry. What did you say? Mary? Well, so so what I'm trying to set the stage for here, yeah. and, and you guys will talk us through this, but the fiscal year 15 budget for 51100 was $705,000, $3, $3, $3, 
They're asking for an additional five hundred eighty thousand dollars. So with that introduction, Alan, why don't you? Uh, uh, I think you've all met Chris Alexander. Chris is our board director of finance. Hi, Chris. Um, but if you haven't, this is Chris Alexander. Chris is our board director of finance. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank to, you. Uh, just to direct to that, that first question by the overtime. Now, uh, in speaking with um, several people, now my understanding is, and if you look right below there, there's you, know, you can see the expenditures line for overtime for the year at one point one four million, but the expenditures line for the holiday services at zero dollars, showing a favorable to budget of two hundred ten thousand dollars. Now, what I've been told is that within that overrun in overtime, that part of that allocation uh, in the past had actually gone into the line below that. Now, so you, the, the four hundred thirty-six thousand dollar over budget amount within the overtime services, uh, I believe that to be more in line if you net that with the two hundred ten thousand dollar positive variance with the holiday overtime uh, line item right below that. I've asked this of uh, the ADP consultant who came uh, a few weeks ago, looking at the uh, more in, in detail the numbers within the ADP system, and it was her opinion that. Though that the overtime is actually more of a product of the two of those netted out, still over budget, I don't believe it to be uh, at the four hundred and thirty-six thousand dollar level. Chris, I'm sorry. The, the, so I'm, I just opened up my page and then sure. And I'm going to um, share it. Mm -hmm. you know you're so we have the seven hundred five thousand in the, uh, the overtime line. What was the other line you said? Temporary salary? Right below it. Directly below it. Okay, Two hundred ten for holidays. Services. Okay. I'm and sorry. it's a question certainly I wanted to to uh, to get Rowan's opinion on as well. Uh, I know he's been asked that as well, but. There's a reason that there's zero dollars in expenditures for, for the holiday line but directly below it, when in reality there certainly has been uh, holiday pay uh, made. So that, that line item is, you can call it incorrect or inaccurate, probably partially because it should be a combination of the two of those line items one way or the other. But the total then of there. overtime then would have been, you know, for 915 or so thousand dollars. Uh, and we're looking at a cost overrun. I mean, it, it, it's still Mr. Johnson's point. It's just the jo Mr. Johnson's point just got a snip smaller, but it's still a sig significant point. Right. That of a nine hundred and fifteen thousand dollar budgeted item, we're looking at an, at an overrun of something approaching six hundred thousand. Well, in general, so there's several items within the object code that are over budget. But if you're starting with the overtime services, that one certainly is has gone over budget. And there are uh, several reasons behind that, and just to kind of on a high level outline a few of them, and we, we talked uh, internally with our staffing uh, to understand sort of what was the genesis, genesis behind going over and over time. Uh, you know, a big part of what we do, we have, uh, no matter what the scenario is and what the, uh, the time of year is, we have a necessity to have uh, minimum staffing requirements for, uh, by law, by health code. Uh, so we also always have to have the right number of staff on the ground uh, for the, the resident care. So uh, several items that were brought to my attention that contributed this past year, one of which was weather. Uh, we had extenuating circumstances with, uh, with weather that everybody knows about in this area that caused us to bring in people who had normally had gone over there uh, a lot of time for, for their week or their biweekly pay. Uh, they were brought in and at full overtime pay. Um, we have had several of our people out on FMLA uh, and training as well. So we've had some extenuating circumstances that have forced us into using people uh, that have hit holiday, uh, hit overtime. Uh, Wait, Chris, he, uh, um, listen, this has been an unusual year. Mm -hmm. I, it, we had Ray Augustine leave. We've got a very capable Chris Alexander coming in. There is, has to be, uh, but just by the nature of the events, some slippage and inattention. But going forward, the weather issues are issues that were happening in January, February, March, n not May and June. I, I don't know when the family leave events took place. Maybe they were, uh, they were uh, concentrated in the late spring and early summer. I, I really don't know the answer to that. But I, it, it has a sense to me of a situation in which I had this accruing, I had this accruing problem that we were running ahead of the authorized expenditures and nobody's saying anything to us at, from VET standpoint until finally we come to the crescendo at the end that the number is spent and now we need to have an appropriation to cover it. And that's not the way in which we want to do the budgeting. We want to, I can also appreciate, and I don't know anything about running a nursing home, but I can appreciate that it may be that the mix of what staff you need may be driven by 
the patients or residents that you have in the facility, and it's hard to anticipate this month what your mix of patients and residents are going to be next month. I can appreciate some of those things may be the case, but this kind of a number of change of $580,000 overrun on a budget of 915 didn't just happen in May and June. Uh, and to say to us in your, in your explanos, uh, to say that um, the late invoicing in May pushed some dollars into June, well, if that's the case, there must have been a savings in May that would be offsetting to the extra dollars in June, I would think. I mean, somehow it feels to me that I had an accumulating problem that we weren't getting a grip on and we weren't knowing about. And some of it may be a staffing issue of Ray leaving and Chris coming and this type of thing. But going forward, that's not how we need to do this. Can I ask a question? Sure. So the contract you have for rehab services, you outsource, is that correct? Some of those rehab services. Is, help me understand that contract. Is that a per visit by the it's done so by the, the therapist. The contract with uh, with Select Rehab, and that's okay. uh, and that is I'm glad you asked the question because it's one of the key areas that we're over the budget, and that's the uh, professional medical and dental. The bulk of Select Rehab is what makes up that number. That's in the overrun. Um, they bill on a, essentially a, a time with residents uh, perspective on a monthly basis, and they bill uh, in arrears. So they, it's hard to know uh, what the exact bill is going to be on a monthly basis, but it can range and it ranged anywhere in the past this past year from. I believe 120,000 up to 230,000. It all depends upon the number of residents they're seeing, uh, the level of care the residents need, uh, and they put together a very detailed report and send that along with the invoice uh, roughly around three weeks after the end of the month, apl applicable to the prior month close. Uh, and so the, the first item on there that I mentioned was, unfortunately, my goal was to, uh, to attempt to, as soon as I realized where we were within the numbers, to try to get ahead of this before we went over the object code. Uh, and, and Roland could probably attest. I, I called and said, "We're going to have uh, we're going to have an issue." And then all of a sudden, the next day, this select uh, for May hit our account and pushed us over. And that unfortunately didn't allow me to try to get ahead of it before we went over the budget. So select is an interesting one, and it's it's uh, the other big piece of that object code that we're over. Uh, and one of the areas that we need to do is to look essentially at the budgeting process for how select was budgeted. We clearly didn't budget enough for select rehab. I think we by uh, going through the numbers, we budgeted about a $231,000, uh, too small of an amount. Uh, and that contributed almost to the bulk of that portion of the object code, which I think was over by uh, $243,000. So right there, it was under budgeting enough. We didn't budget enough for the select rehab for the, for the entire year. Um, and by the way, how could that happen? Right. This is the first year that we've had uh, 42 beds with all private rooms. Um, and the, you've heard these numbers before for me, but prior to the project renew uh, renovations, we were doing 31 admissions a month. After the renovations were finished, we bumped up to 55 admissions a month. So we, you know, based on inexperience with that kind of rehab unit and that kind of service, we just didn't expect that we would be as busy as we are. You know, we've never under budgeted before. This was the first year. This is the same vendor. And it was a, you know, it's an abundance of caution, if you will, that we just didn't think it would be that successful that quickly. And it's so the I'll, same vendor. Uh, I'm sorry, same, same vendor, vendor that you've used previously, yes. and you've always been on budget with that. So, Alan, what are the implications for fiscal year 16? Well, we budgeted significantly more uh, for. Um, I think last year we budgeted just under two million dollars, and this year we budgeted. Something like two million six, so we should not have the same problem this year as we did uh, this coming year. As we did this Your company. comfortable that figure will will be a working figure, a yes. workable figure. I, well, I think so. But lessons learned. If it turns out not to be, if we have the inclination that it's it's the figure was also under, then you know the idea being to be able to come sooner rather than in July of uh, of, the, of the following fiscal year. Obviously, you know to your point. Uh, Mr. Raymer, you know, I can't go back and uh, change what the, what the numbers are and what happened through the course of, of 12 months. And you made a very valid point, and one of the areas I wanted to emphasize was, you know, there was a, a time gap uh, between, uh, between Ray's departure and me coming on board uh, in a very critical part of the fiscal year, I think everybody would agree. Uh, under nor normal circumstances, uh, I would hope that this would have been something that um, 
could be caught, brought to the attention of the BT well in advance of the close of the fiscal year and look at possibilities for uh, transfers or to stem the tide before it even gets to going over the object code budget. Now, obviously, that's not the case this time around, but um, you know, from my perspective going forward, that's going to be a very vital part of monitoring the situation uh, into the future. And I think that's important. All right, so just I'll get your question in a minute, but Roland, so the money's coming out of pension contributions, right? It's, it's coming out of a lot, a lot of areas. This what? Well, you've got the, the object code of 57010. So that's not just pension contributions, it's a collection of other... No, no the pension contribution is, 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 is the biggest, but you can see the, the total is $800,000 over. $800,000 unspent? Yes. I mean, okay. unspent, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is that, you know, we have such a large amount like that, is that something you anticipated that went into next year's budget or this current year 16 budget or? Year over year actuals, they're up $600,000, basically. There's 9.5%. Right. 647,000, yeah. my math is correct. <clears throat> Six, 602. Did I do it wrong? I deducted 6960 from 7607. No, I'm, I'm looking actual to actual, not actual to budget. Oh, I see. I have 602,000. Okay. <clears throat> so the, bu the budget was put together in a very conservative manner. Uh, in pre prior years, if we had this large, uh, I don't concern? think it was. I don't think it was this large before. When you say budget was put together in a conservative manner, you mean that they were guessing expenses at conservative figures, right? That's not what I call it because that's what I call a not conservative budget. Okay. Uh, yeah. They, they wanted to make sure they had enough money to cover their expenses, I guess. But so, if they were guessing their expenses at relatively low figures, mm -hmm. that's not a conservative budget. That's, okay, it doesn't matter. It's just well, language. Well, like, well, like, can you just the refresh us on what you do at the end of each year to calculate what the actual town contributions are that come from Nathaniel Witherell what, to us? What we do is we take the, uh, the people in the uh, defined benefit plan, we take their pensionable earnings, and we apply uh, the pension percent by bar unit against those pension earnings. Okay. Uh, for the de defined contribution plan, it's pretty simple. We just look at the deductions for the employees and with the town matches dollar for dollar. Yep. Uh, healthcare, we take each, uh, each person by each pay period and see what kind of coverage they have and calculate it based upon what our costs are. And all of these are the so-called allocations. <laughs> the, What's, what's that? The allocation. These are the allocations that right. we charge yeah, them. Right. Ex these are, but some of the numbers are, are quite precise. I mean, in case of health care and pension, we take the actual person by every pay period okay. and calculate what that benefit is. Okay. So on a per person basis, when it's that discreet and that correct, we're, we're usually, that should be a predictable number. Let's put it that way, not something that you have to budget uh, a lot of cushion into. I, I guess uh, in the case of the pension, you know, we had been going up from, from 16 to 19 to 22. And like I said, they start their budget process way before most of the town departments. So I think they put in a, anticipated a, a increase similar to what we had been seeing in terms of 20% or so. Okay. Leslie, I'm sorry, you had a question. Yeah, no, I think uh, I've had the opportunity to <clears throat> welcome to Nathaniel Witherall Board directors who obviously come to uh, offer some reinforcement to Alan and Chris here. Um, I guess, you know, again, we're getting this without any context. And, you know, as an example, the invoice from um, Select may have been late, but 
you know, you're there managing the business, and I would have expected that, you know, the nurses or management would have visually seen that there was a lot of activity and hence, you know, needed to look at, at the budget. Um, I mean, select is, is there on site and it's not like it's a different group of people. <coughs> Did they have to bring in extra people in order to do this rehab? Well, have, yes, they have been bringing in extra people. And um, also, what was your, you know, occupancy during this period? say for the month of June, or May and June, I guess this was May's invoice, and also for May and June, and also just for the year to get a feel for that. Um, Again, uh, there's no supporting. May and June, May and June have been over 90%, uh, 92%-ish, uh, and... Uh, Is that over all or just for rehab? Well, for rehab, it was about 90, 90 over 90% of the time. Uh, for May and June, it's over 90 and then on an annualized basis, is it the same as, say, May and June? So, or is there a big variance on an annual? I mean, did you build up to these numbers so therefore well, we, we could understand? No, the, 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 the problem with our budget was largely at the beginning of the year because if you recall, we weren't able to open up the new rehab unit on time because the mm -hmm. state couldn't send a survey, uh, uh, survey team. Uh, so we really didn't open up the rehab unit until uh, June, uh, July 29th. I was going to say August, so. Yeah, well, August 1st. But the actual date of opening was July 29th. Between July 29th and August 29th, which was the Friday before Labor Day weekend, the census increased the rehab from 9 to 39. So we lost the first <coughs> month and a half, in effect, right. uh, for our rehab census. And then it just blocks it after that. We, you know, again, the, the emissions have been 60% higher than the previous years. And the occupancy, which used to run in the 29-30 range when rehab was on the fourth floor, has been running about 37. Uh, sometimes as high as 42, sometimes as low as 34. But average 37 for the year. And um, just thank you for the response. Um, have you brought us, say, are there preliminary June financial statements so that we can, no, right, not yet? Yeah, the, the revenue just closed uh, earlier today, so we don't have the, the, we'll have it shortly, but we don't have it yet. Thank you. Okay. In your application, there's some references to ADP, which is obviously a system that every other department has dealt with on the same time frame that you have. Um, and with a very friendly warning that Mrs. Weisler and myself have been deeply involved in this uh, as BET liaisons, can you just help me understand why B ADP is mentioned here as a, as a problem or as a cause? Well, going forward, and I'll, going forward, I'd like to be able to uh, work with the ADP reporting that we have uh, at our availability uh, through our individual workstations uh, at the facility to get as much information on a, a, a pay cycle at the very least a monthly basis to pull out ADP to understand exactly where, uh, not just by facility but by department and even uh, sub through uh, both uh, temporary part-time and regular employees over time because of what's clearly been an issue is going on over time. I'd like to be able to identify that uh, as quickly and clearly as possible within the ADP reporting uh, tool that we have available to us so we can say ahead of time that we're trending in an area on Department X, for example, uh, where overtime is being, it looks like it's, gonna, it's going in a, in a direction that's going to go out, out of budget if we carry that forward throughout the year. Uh, be able to speak to the department heads, find out what the problem is, see if, we, if it's a matter of uh, staffing or changing the, the, the structure of staffing, and try to look at that from a, a, a total point of view and understand exactly as quick as possible you know, before we get to the point where all of a sudden we're over and over time. Really just identifying that, uh, that the, the lesson learned is the need to understand exactly what's available in ADP, the reporting tool, and how best to utilize that. So it's a very robust reporting. It is, and just uh, last portfolio. week, the week before, uh, we were able to get uh, uh, Tamara Fogel uh, to, to come out and, and sit with us for a little while to look, dig into the system, just show us uh, how robust it really is, and there's a lot there. Uh, and some more training is going to be necessary, I think, uh, on site for us to really understand 
what uh, for us to figure out what we can get out of it and what the questions are and where to find each piece of it because there is as you know there's a lot there to, to, uh, to dig through and I think the answers are all there it's a matter of uh, on, you know on my side being able to know uh, where to pull each piece of it uh, during which part of the year all right so I, I think at least speaking for one member of the HR committee I'm, we're hoping to start to be able to pull analytics pull reports see over time across mm -hmm. the town, let alone uh, Nathaniel Witherell going forward um, with a general reminder that this, this shouldn't happen. I mean, th and it's certainly now that we have ADP and that robust um, reporting system, we'll be able to know very quickly uh, what we've got in every single account. Good. No, that's, and that would only be helpful for us. So, yeah. thank you. Okay. Any other questions on this item? I'm only curious about <clears throat> how full you are at this point, Ellen. Uh, we've been uh, since the 4th, we've been running between 185 and 190, uh, a couple of days uh, up to 192. Um, but the holiday, you know, several of the surgeons have been away on vacation, so the admissions drop a little bit uh, pre and post the holiday week. Uh, but we have had a very, we had a very strong June, uh, stronger than they, in fact. Uh, and um, we're, not, we're not at all unhappy with uh, our census. We are happy about the, the budget variance, but uh, we'll get our handles on that now. Okay. Um, and how does that split between the rehab and the long-term residents? Well, rehab's been running uh, about 88%, and uh, uh, long-term has been running about 93%. Um, and of the long-term residents, um, how does that split between the Medicare on the one hand, I'm sorry, the uh, um, um, uh, the Medicaid, on the one hand, and the uh, Medicare insurance and self-pay. Medicaid <laughs> is, uh, on any given day, we are plus or minus 100 patients uh, that are Medicaid funded. And, and all of them are in long term. Uh, it's rare, uh, almost <coughs> never happens that a, that a short term uh, resident is funded by Medicaid. Mm -hmm. Most of them come in either with uh, commercial insurance or Medicare, uh, HMO, or Medicare. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's <clears throat> move on to the next item, which is uh, NW2, $400,000. Um, additional appropriation, but through a steep grant. Is that correct? Um, Alan, before you start, let me just again turn to Roland, if I can, for a minute. Roland, the $400,000 um, that we're looking to uh, allocate here on the steep grant, is that something new? I know we had the $100,000 go for the uh, security upgrades in the last fiscal year. Had we used or committed to any of the other prior $400,000? No. no. Uh, so this is in addition to the steep grant from last well, fiscal year? The steep, the, the steep grant was a half a million dollar uh, grant. Um, uh, only $100,000 of that was previously appropriated, and that was for the security upgrade that are now under, underway. Uh, the remaining $400,000, uh, we haven't addressed to you yet, and that's what we're here tonight uh, to do. So there's $400,000 that remains unappropriated. It's a reimbursement grant, as you all know. And uh, there are four elements that are left that will constitute the $400,000. Uh, one is a replacement of the greenhouse on the south side of the building adjacent to we have department. Um, uh, there's a uh, that, that's hundred thousand dollars. There's uh, seventy-five thousand dollars to repay the employee parking lot. There's a hundred thousand dollars to uh, uh, repoint the brick exterior surface on the administration building, and there's fifty thousand uh, dollars to uh, support landscaping uh, in the courtyard. And then there's some uh, money for design and uh, project. So, Alan, were any of these items uh, identified in the fiscal year 16 capital? No, these are grant items that, that are reimbursed through the state capital. No, but so by that, you mean like a kind of extra nice to have that wasn't quite important? Well, they're not nice to have. The, the original grant was that we applied for was to support uh, aspects of uh, Project Renew. Um, after the grant was approved, we were advised that we could not spend money that had been previously committed to 
this is so we're going to have to be new, this is new for last year. So what we did is we uh, addressed some of the areas that were this is not included in project review because right? of the value engineering yeah, process that the building committee did. And we asked the Department of Health if they would allow us to repurpose the, the grant to uh, these, these alternate projects, which they uh, approved. But we, do. we had to resubmit the application uh, for repurposing, and they subsequently approved these projects as I've described. Mark? I, I, I'm a little confused. I thought that this, you're saying this is a reimbursement grant, as we all knew, but it was my understanding when we approved the $100,000 for the safety and security aspect that we said the money couldn't be released or you know, wouldn't be, you know, it had to be in the account. You couldn't spend it until it was in the account. So I'm not sure, and we asked, and, you know, in order to accommodate you, it's my understanding that Roland and Pete were to monitor that. And um, so I don't think it was explained to us before that it was a reimbursement grant, at least as I remember this. All, all of the state grants, um, and Art Norton has advised me several times that the town has received numerous state grants, but they're all reimbursement grants. You have to spend the money first submit the bills to them, and, uh, and then they reimburse it. Okay. So have we spent any of the safety and security money at this point in time? We haven't been billed for it, but the work is ongoing now, yes. Okay. And then I think we initially heard about these grants maybe in our February budget hearing, and we did ask whether they could be repurposed for some of the items that and maybe some of it was also in, in March. You know, remember, and there was a lot of confusion in terms of like different pres presentations. If any of these, this steep grant could be used for um, any of the new proposed projects, or about a million and a half that you presented to us, and I think at that point in time you said no, but they weren't original project renew projects. They were projects to um, change the configuration of. I think the garden level of the rehab in order to add beds or, you know, et cetera. So I guess my question is, if you're going to repurpose the funds, why weren't they repurposed for something that really wasn't part of Project Renew and that you had prioritized as needing town funds for? The, the grant was a Project Renew related grant. And um, the grant that we were proposing tried to keep it focused on the project for new uh, renovations, which excluded the, the areas that I, that I described. Um, that we, we felt, based on our conversations with the Department of Public Health, that if we uh, varied too far from the original intent of the, of the grant, that they couldn't approve it. And then um, I, I had a question about an item on this. Um, one of the last item that you list was construction management, architectural slash engineering, and contingency, $85,000. What is the intent for use of that $85,000? For, for those issues. Oh, for, the, for each of the items above, you're, yeah, you're going to add? combination of those four or five items, yeah. Thank you. It's only the variance of the figures, Roland. I just wanted to understand. You've given us a, a sheet with a breakout, which has slightly different figures, and they aggregate, if my math is correct, um, $400,000. The figures that I have on the blue sheet, so to speak, from them, with slightly different figures, but they aggregate um, 400, I'm sorry, $500,000. Contingency. Including the contingency. But did that include the uh, security, the 100000 Yes, yeah, that, it does. That was already done. That was already done. I see. So, so the, the difference is just allocating the... Uh, so when you allocate back the back. construction management, the A&E, &E and the contingency, if I did the allocations it, uh, in a more refined way, I would get the figures that you gave us on the supplemental yes. sheet. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, so you took out the uh, security I got you. expenses. Yeah. Thank you. Just, just a couple basic questions. What is the timeline for all of these projects listed and, and the management of it. You have money you're, ask, you're asking to use for construction management. Is this all going to be managed by an outside construction manager? Well, it depends, I think, on whether or not we have the capacity inside to, to manage it. Um, our 
our board felt strongly that we ought to include a, uh, an allocation for construction management. Um, and, you know, do you need a construction management company to repay the parking lot? You know, Jack, Jack Hornack is here. The answer may or may not be yes or no, uh, but we'll find that out once we uh, go out to bid. Okay. Uh, I think we can probably do that one ourselves. I'm not sure uh, about the greenhouse replacement. That might need some, uh, you know, because it's connected to the building, it might need some construction management services. And your timeline? Well, actually, what we did was we're working with uh, Steve Pistola, who's the architect of the town, who is working to design what we need to do for the greenhouse uh, and the appointing of the administration building. So any design help and construction management help will come from Steve, with myself included. And Jack, what's the timeline for all of these projects? I would say that close to the end of the third quarter we can finish everything. Okay. <clears throat> any other questions at this time? Yeah. I, I was curious about the Friendship Garden. Originally, I thought there were funds, funds from the um, Hortalis. Did you want to clarify that? September. The, okay. the Friendship Garden, um, as I remember, it was originally there were funds from a community development block grant, and which I can't remember the number. It was a so, you know, fifty thousand or seventy-five thousand. Is this fifty thousand dollars here in addition to that money that was has already been? So it's a basically hundred, hundred twenty-five thousand dollar garden. The uh, the CDBG money, the community development block grant money, was spent on uh, a handicapped accessible doorway entrance from the garden. So that money's been spent. And it's not this work; it's something else. This is landscaping work that was. Uh, in fact, there were limitations on the CBPG money that were not going to spend it on landscaping. So this is uh, this is the landscaping itself. The CBPG money went towards that door. Thank you, um, Mark. Can I just um, make a comment, which I'd made in the meant to make on the last one? Yeah. Um, I, I meant to point out that the blue sheet is for four four hundred eighty-five thousand dollars, whereas our Agenda is only for there's a there's a difference here, 585 versus 580. So I think it needs a correction. Um, just so we're aware of that. The agenda should read 585 instead of 580. Right. Roland, is that? <clears throat> NW1. No, or it's up to 400. No, no, with the previous one, NW1. The previous oh, the one. previous one. Yeah. Looked like the budget was 585. I meant to bring it up, and I just somehow. In the conversation. It should be 585 now. Yeah, so maybe on the agenda for the BET, maybe that correction. Okay. Also, when we approve it, yeah. sure okay, anything else on this, uh, this item? No. Um, thank you for coming. Uh, before you leave, um, we do want to at some point have a quarterly review. Um, so your your fourth quarter, when would you be pre prepared to uh, talk about the fourth quarter, let's say? We don't meet in August. So potential. Yeah. Yes. Um, we'll certainly be ready by the end of the month, don't you think? All right, so what I'm getting at is that may, depending on the agenda schedule, we may look at it for September. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. I, I mean, I'll let you know, but just fair warning. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all. Okay, next item on the agenda is old business. Um, before I get to uh, the new Lebanon discussion, I just have a couple of quick comments. Um, I met with Alan Minnelli uh, about two or three weeks ago. And in terms of Central Fire Station, um, just to summarize my, my meeting with them, uh, things appear to be going pretty well. Everybody can see the, uh, the steel girders going up. Uh, they're pouring the concrete decks on the different floors. Uh, the, all the mechanicals are on site. Um, so far, it appears they're on budget. There's been a number of uh, change orders, which is normal for a large commercial project. Uh, but things appear to be going pretty well. They are behind schedule by three months. He thinks that he can uh, make up the schedule at least one month of that three months. Um, so some of that delay was due to 
coordinating with the uh, police building next door. Footings, there's one common wall between them, so there's a little bit of a challenge there. But generally, things look like they're going pretty well. Just FYI, as an update. So, so Mark, this is a further delay from what he reported. No, it's, it's staying okay. what he was talking about before. When he says he's within budget, means that he's covering the change orders within the contingency. Is that what that means, uh, or does it mean actually within budget without the contingency? Both. Um, no, so within the contingencies, but also there's, uh, if you remember, a savings of about uh, nine hundred thousand dollars with the general contractor. So, um, and then just briefly on the Byron pool, I wanted to kind of see where he was, you know, how things are going. Yes. Um, and he is very busy. Um, the plans are getting close to 90% done. Um, he is um, actually getting some real bids on some of the different uh, components of that. He is trying to um, um, put together put together for us an a la carte menu, so that such as you know some of the individual components of the building. Um, if you remember, we looked at uh, some of the things we threw out, perhaps the entrance building. Perhaps the pump house, uh, there's a number of different tanks that could be buried underneath. Um, anyway, there's a lot of work that's gone into it so far, so we'll have more of an update when we return in September. Um, but again, it's uh, he'll be ready in September to probably have a better, uh, more accurate discussion on the- Can we schedule him too for September then? Yeah. yeah. So that's for the release then, that they're, they're going to come in September? Possibly, yes. Okay. Yeah. Again, I'll, I'll play that by ear and see how far he is and if he's ready. but. If you remember, in some of our conditions, we talked about 90% done on the, on right. the, on the, uh, the plan, so that he's close to that, as well as getting some actual bids. So things are moving along good, good. You know, with that. So, um, Okay, so the next item is um, looking at new lab. Um, let me preface by saying um, um, thank you to Bill Drake. I don't know if Bill's here, but Bill kind of prompted us to, uh, to, to look at this before we adjourn for the summer. Um, I wasn't sure what my expectations were to come out of this meeting. Um, at a minimum, I'd like to get a feel for what the process is as we release conditions and or uh, release different budget items. Um, certainly, uh, Leslie and others that have been involved with MISA, there's a lot of learning that can go into this project itself. Um, there's a couple things that, that I'd like to find out. I think we as a committee probably want to find out, and that is who the applicant is that comes and asks for release of conditions, and who asks for the different budget items. And I'm not really sure whether that's the building committee, and Steve Walco, I think, is here. Uh, Steve and I talked a little bit earlier today, um, so Steve, please you know, chime in. Wayne Fox is here, too, from a legal standpoint. You know, Maybe you have some input on that. Again, what I'd like to do is get a better idea from a process standpoint so we can keep moving right along and not hold up anybody on the, uh, on the release of conditions. Um, more specifically, there was um, the first kind of items we had set aside, $200,000 and $800,000. One of the items uh, mentioned in that release of conditions was soil. So I think we need to have a good conversation as to, you know, where do you draw the line, if you will. Uh, between the footprint of the building, or the area of the building, the new construction, whether it's uh, Scheme D, what comes into play with the ballpark, the, uh, the, the field on William Street, should that be part of this project or should that be a separate DPW? So, again, I look at this more as kind of a general discussion. Um, so with that, um, Ron is here from the Board of Ed. Do you want to maybe start off and take us through that? Um, I, I wouldn't mind to know who the... Uh, yeah, so if you can uh, introduce yeah, the other people, too. Um, these are our, our consultants who uh, did the... Uh, Soil uh, analysis for us, the soil testing, and and the um, A2 uh, boundaries. Okay, can you introduce them? So Ryan, Ryan, if you want to introduce your team. Yeah, I'm Ryan Wolstrom. Behind me is Andy Ives. He's one of our lead project surveyors. And to the right is one of our licensed environmental professionals, Jamie Barr. Jamie Bond. Barr, B A R R. And I'm sorry, you guys are from You're which? From? Langan Engineering. Okay. Who? Now, is Langdon somebody that has done other projects for the about uh, MESA? Langdon, Langdon works uh, for our uh, engineering consultant, uh, AKF, and so we've hired them uh, through AKF. Ryan, what's your last name again? Wolstrom. W-O-L-S-T-R-O-M. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe a good point to start off on is is 
maybe Wayne, if you have an opinion, or, well, who else is here? We've got Ben, Mr. Mason is here. Mike, we're having a kind of a general discussion. It's your fault. No, general discussion on who's responsible for soil remediation, whether it's in the ball field or under the new potential building site for new lab. So would that be under DPW? Would that be the Board of Ed? Which site, A, B, C, or D? Well, All of the above. All of the above. Okay. I would, it would be safe to say that site A it would probably, the building committee decided to go with the architecture with that location, there, they would be responsible for remediation in that area. Site B, that field, to my knowledge, is left in the inventory of Board of Education outside building education specifications, so that would fall into the Board of Ed's hands. We may change something like that. We've done that in the past. Site C, part of that C and D, I'm not, I'm believing <coughs> that that land is under Board of Ed control and or if, wherever it falls in the, the building committee's report. I, you know. so, but could I ask a quick question on that? Uh, so, and maybe this is for Wayne, but if A, D and C are all on the same parcel. There's a 7.7 .7 acre parcel there. Does the whole parcel have to be cleaned up once we start digging and we know that there is at least some pesticides in C? No. I that think work. the only piece that needs cleaning up now is the piece that was determined to be above certain regulations and certain mm -hmm. measurements. That has, has been reported to the EP. We'll have to work with them to clean that up and do what is necessary and that is just B, the ball field. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, I'm sorry. Uh, this may be a question for Ron. If B is determined to be a staging area for construction, or perhaps used as an access to a, what some have called a tight construction site, I guess A, is that uh, an option you're looking at? And B, it, Will that then impact the timing of cleanup for that particular site where we know uh, under regulations we do have to clean up? Yeah. We, we um, ballpark the cleanup figure uh, with Ryan, and it's just a ballpark. And I was anticipating it going into the Board of Ed's capital budget uh, for next year. It's, uh, it's fair to say it's under a six figure number. I'm sorry, for which it's, part? It's under a six B. figure number. For, for cleaning up? For cleaning up B. the ball yeah, field. Just that one small. Right, we're area. we're assuming we're we're assuming the exceedance that's requiring that's right. to be cleaned up is is under is under a six figure number, and I was going to include that in the capital. But you know, pending my my uh, new boss's arrival, and everything matches with him and the board of ed approval, I was going to look at putting <coughs> that into the capital plan. Okay, so for for D, where the new school may go, does that fall under? building committee or the board of ed uh i'm assuming that we're building the new building on d and would fall under the building committee purview but i don't i don't see that we have any contaminants at this point on d okay other than oil tank removal or yeah underground storage tank removal. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, to wayne if i may uh is there any requirement that uh, governs the timing of a cleanup on b of the ball field are we at liberty if it seems prudent to do the construction on site D, and when that work is concluded, then do the remediation on the ball field? I know there is a requirement that, uh, yeah. Yeah. A requirement that it be reported mm -hmm. in a certain period of time or cleaned up within a certain period of time. Correct. We are currently working with our consultants as far as a reporting. In order to report, we have to have a remediation plan together. So. We have um, roughly another 55 days or so before that's due. Langen is putting that together for us. Um, we, uh, we will meet that deadline. Here's the piece that's on my mind. I don't, I don't right. know if this makes sense or not. But uh, if, as uh, Ms. Kiernan has indicated, the ball field may be used as a staging area, uh, I don't think you'll want to be trying to do a remediation while you're also using it as a staging area. And I'm not sure that you'd want to do the remediation before you upset the field using it as a staging area. Secondly, Site B right now isn't within 
the frame of reference or jurisdiction or whatever of the building committee. So you'll end up with talking to two different bodies if you're trying to organize with Mr. Wolko the, um, uh, the progress of the construction on Site D. It might be more orderly to finish that up and then go back to the school board or take Site B and ask that Site B be handled by Public Works or whatever and deal with that remediation after it. I don't have any experience mm -hmm. in, in construction or land development, so I may be entirely mistaken, but I have this visceral reaction that it seems more logical to do the construction of the building, to get done with it, use the, the ball field for a staging area if that's necessary. When that work is all done, then deal with whatever remediation you have to do on the ball field to be allowed to use it for school playground as well as public playground space, we, uh, we've, ball field space. We've cordoned off the contaminated areas with eight foot fencing and we have an overabundance of caution uh, in that so we're, we're protected I believe going forward, if we don't remediate immediately, um, we, we have time to present that. Ryan, is that? Oh, with it cordoned off by eight-foot fencing, is it available to us to use as a staging area if we wish to for the construction? I, mean, I think it's worth noting that when the decision's made to remediate this small area, this is not a long-term remedial effort. It's, it's uh, 30 cubic yards of soil. It can be done over a couple of days, you know, not including time for samples to get back from the lab, but this is not a month-long remedial effort. So maybe I'm mistaken. Is there any reason then, is there reason not to do that now and then go ahead and use it as a staging area afterward? Is there, am I in danger of upsetting the soil in such a way that I bring to the surface something which you had remediated against previously no. and we have to do it again? I don't see any risk in doing that. Could I ask a question Everybody's related question. to that? So, do you have <clears throat> full site characterization of B at this point? Or We've done a you? pretty comprehensive delineation of this exceedance area. I mean, to date, we've done 80 borings on the baseball field. Only one of those samples had this elevated level. And I, that we don't have that. We don't have the full report in writing, which is due out shortly. Is why it's not on the website or to the board so yet. So, it's underway. A full site of phase two full site characterization is underway. So, right, so we did a phase two for the baseball field months ago. Okay. Once we identified these elevated levels of arsenic, we performed a more, a more comprehensive delineation. We had those results as early as last week being given to us, so we're in the process of providing okay. that report now. Okay. Great. All right, so let's, let's talk about site D then. <clears throat> can, can, can I, before, okay, I mean, rather than talking about now referring them all, you know, always to the plans that we had, none of which were approved except for D. Isn't it better to start referring to these parcels as they're identified in the survey by the three distinct parcels and um, making sure that we understand where the um, meets and bounds are of each of those parcels and take that into consideration as we proceed here? I mean, we certainly have learned some lessons on GHS and you know, I think uh, you've seen um, the memo that summarized the meeting that, that Mary Lee and I had with Wayne and, and Katie and, and um, Jim Michael. So, I mean, I think Jim, you know, recommended that the sites be held distinctly on, as we go along here, if at all possible. I mean, I don't think he added if at all possible. I've just added that, but I think he was, pretty clear in his recommendation. So aren't we better off? I think one of the things that I'd emailed was perhaps we could get a survey that has a bolder outline of each of those parcels, that that might be helpful. And then to sort of start dropping, yeah. we've selected a site now and start talking about the site and where it is relative to these parcels. Yeah, that, that question is somewhat out of my purview of authority, so I, I would not want to speak for the Board of Ed or the Board of Ed Administration on that not knowing the ramifications of whether that ball field remains uh, part of the new Lebanon physical education experience. So well, I, just, I wasn't saying that. Right. I, I mean, I, I, I'm understood. just saying that even if they're all part of the Board of Education right. physical education experience, yeah. that those parcels be continue to be identified as and, they were in the Langan survey. Right. 
um, with meets and bounds as identified unless, you know. And I, I think that's a little bit out, outside of, of my scope or ability, so I, I don't want to speak to that um, you know, publicly. Okay. So <clears throat> do, do, do we need um, DEED approval before we could start to do the remediation on B? Yes. Is there any sense? Oh, I'm sorry. Not entirely. If, if we decided before the 90-day time period is up to remediate on our own free will and then report those results, that's also fine. But within 90 days, we need to remediate it or give a plan to how to remediate it. I, I, I'm just looking for a solution here that, that doesn't impede the progress of the work that we want to do to develop mm -hmm. a new school. And so I'm trying to figure out uh, if, if, you, if you wanted to do the remediation and get it done so that the field is available to you to use the staging ground for the construction, you're saying that we could go ahead and do the remediation now? Theoretically, we can start tomorrow. Is there any risk that in the end we do a remediation and then the DEP comes back to us and says, we're not satisfied with the work you did or the plan that you presented? Well, um, so as, as long as we met the, the criteria that we're held to when we finish the remediation or when we execute the remediation, it would be my stamp going on it as an LEP, unless it's an unprofessional Connecticut, then the DEP would look at and hold that as a that was So that's a, a, a yes, we could be comfortable that uh, the DEP is not going to come back to us with objections to <coughs> what we did. Correct. So, but as a second option, though, you could have a plan to remediate. Correct. So Sometime if, down the line if, after if, the if it's not remediated within 90 days, we have to submit a plan within 90 days. And then from that point on, we just need to keep it protected until the mediation. Right. So if we did that scenario, if we presented a plan and chose to do the remediation down the road, is the use of the field available to us as the staging ground for the construction before the remediation is done? So long as that area is not disturbed and uh, we still have to keep that area protected. How we do that, we have some leeway to how, how large is the um, precluded area? Is it, 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 do I have substantial? 20 foot diameter. Pardon? 20 foot diameter. 20 foot diameter. That's right. So, Jeff, if I can suggest, let's leave that up to the building committee to decide how they're going to remediate and when they're going to remediate. That's not for us right that, now. That's a good suggestion. I just wanted to have a sense of what the options are available to us. Uh, I, so I, I just want to you know, compare it to the high school environmental problems. This is very minor. Yeah. Um, Okay, so speaking of minor, let's just talk about D. Yeah. Oil tanks, there, there's one oil tank, maybe a second, we're not sure. Any other testing you still need to do? Any other concerns for Site D? At the point where we know what the construction plans are showing for areas of excavation, maybe foundation elements, uh, utilities, when we know what areas are going to be disturbed, it would be prudent to maybe locate another couple of borings in within these areas to see what type of environmental premiums, if any, will be uh, need to be addressed during construction. But at this point, uh, we, we uh, investigated the areas of concern based on the phase one, which are the two, the one potential fuel oil tank and the one known fuel oil tank. So at this point, no. However, in the future, it's possible. I had the benefit of hearing Ron at the building committee meeting talk about I think three borings that were done on D. Is that right, Ron? I think there were two. In, I, I have to look at the summary, but I think, yeah, I think it's had, three. Yeah, yeah. I okay. think there were two in the back and it one in the front. It was basically up and down gradient from the existing fuel oil tank, and then another one in the area of the presumed former fuel oil tank. Neither oh. found patrolling at All clean. Yes. Okay. okay. Any other questions on soil remediation or site work? Okay. So, just I do actually. Will this be coordinated with the DPW and, um, you know, Jim Michael and, and um, we would, Amy we, Siebert? I would be bringing Amy Siebert and her team in along with AECOM, which we've been consulting all along at the high school, yes. And any legal help you'll yes. be getting accordingly from right. that team? Yes, and AECOM has been involved in this uh, throughout. Amy and AECOM have been lending their expertise to this as, as well. Okay. Um, Pete, well, I've got a question now for you with in terms of how do we do MISA with release of conditions, funding, did that go to the building committee itself? Are we looking at setting up a similar situation here with, with the building committee for New Lab? Who's, who's the applicant? Who's going to come to before us to look for release of conditions and, and funding? Well, certainly for the, the A&E and the construction money, that's going to the building committee. Okay. Now, in case of, of MISA, if you remember, 
they also found that when they found contamination, there was no money in there for remediation or for testing or anything like that. And they actually spent money out of their A and out of the A and E or construction money, even though it wasn't part of the budget. And then the next fiscal year, they came in and requested, I believe, it was 1.7 million mm -hmm. uh, to replenish the money that they had taken out of their construction budget, and also some additional uh, remediation money to just do the work under the footprint of MESA. And then the rest of the, you know, GHS was uh, given to Public Works as a separate project. Okay. Uh, Mark, um, this was sort of ahead of my time. I wasn't involved with MESA at that point. But in my involvement with MESA, um, the building committee has actually been working through the Board of Education on any kind of application. So you will notice that each time that we've come, it's always been sort of led by, you know, the Board of Education, not rather than, you know, our building committee. So, so the... the, 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 the Accounting object codes are within the Board of Ed's department, so it's really up to the building committee to release those funds out of... I would say so, yes. I mean, it's the building committee that would ask for additional appropriations if they need it, and... Uh, okay. How much money is still available for a and &E in the current Board of Education budget? It's... They just got 450 or 500,000 for advanced a and &E on July 1. Yeah, that's... that's we use that to fund next year's... Uh, but that, that's outside of lab. That that's outside that's of New Lab. Yeah. That's outside of New Lab. We use we use yeah. that to fund next capital. And how much was left? Right. And how much was left from the last fiscal year? Any? Uh, any appropriation? I, I don't know. Uh, I think uh, there might have been ninety six thousand left in the last fiscal year, but it also included. And I'm not exact on right, that. Right, right. I thought there it, was when I looked a yeah. while. You know, but there was also included ago. additional money from one study that uh, had been completed under budget, which was probably another forty thousand dollars. Okay, so, but basically there's not 100000 or more dollars. Yeah. So with, with the building committee, with Steve Walco's committee coming before us, looking for the 200000 or the 800000 I mean, that's something that they need to get going to the uh, um, hiring an architect. So the next question then is, <clears throat> from a standard RFP standpoint, what are, what's, what's our policy in terms of engaging an architect? Do we have to release the entire amount of money, you know, the 2.8 million, or can we release the, the 200,000, the 800,000, the, the million dollars, say, this week or next week with a full BET, in order for them to write an RFP? If, well, if the RFP is just to engage an architect and not, then they just... That's to solicit bids from an architect. Right. Okay, so they don't necessarily need money for that. They don't have to be But, but they, they do need the money for whatever contract they want to sign. Once they sign a contract. Yeah. Right. You can't and send the get, contract without the appropriation, yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously. Well, and to get through MI from planning and zoning. I mean, the idea for having a million dollars was to get through planning and zoning. So you'll have had perhaps 30% fund. Okay. And, and our condition on the other million, eight, eight, 850, was the obtaining of uh, municipal improvement right. approval from planning and zoning, okay. which won't have happened, obviously, as you make the application. So right. what you're looking at now is the appropriation of the million dollars to give them the opportunity to hire the architect to do the work that's necessary to complete an application for MI uh, at planning and zoning. And, and if somebody can tell me what's the process, the next steps for MI, somebody on the committee want to talk about that to, in order to achieve MI status from PNZ? So my understanding is that we, the building committee would send out an RFP, the RFP would be responded to, we would then engage an architect. The architect would then draw the plans necessary for us to get MI approval to go before planning and zoning for the necessary approvals. I'm sorry, I missed a step. After, before we engage an architect, we must go back to the Board of Education to approve the architect. Um, and then we can engage the architect to then draw the plans to then submit to planning and zoning uh, for their approval. Okay. But the 1.85 million is needed before the MI can be approved. No. no, no. We the estimate we got from the Board of Ed in March was they needed a million dollars to get through MI with planning and zoning. That's okay. exactly what I understood. Too. Right, and then the 1.85 that's left is to finish the drawing. So that's to go to construction drawings. Yep. Basically. 
So that no, it doesn't have to be full construction drawings. It, you, what you're going to need for, for your application for MI it is a fairly long list of things, but it's not construction drawings. It's mostly conceptual drawings showing the elevations and floor plan and whatnot, but that's not construction drawings. No, no, but the MI, the MI process is going to be completed within this million dollars that we release. Correct? So you're telling me, I mean, I, I haven't looked at well, what I'm just, I'm the, asking no, the, the, the way this came about was Ben Branion and the Board of Ed estimating what they would need to get MI from planning and zoning. That's yeah. where the number came from. Exactly. Yeah. Fair enough, but you asked me if, if I was comfortable with that number, I'm no only comfortable with it because yeah. you're telling me I'm comfortable with it. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know at this point. Um, what I would say, though, is that we would simply bifurcate the contract with the architect because presumably I we can't issue a contract for monies we don't we have that are restricted so the contract with, just to be clear the contract with the architect would have to only be for to get us through the mi approval yeah. process mm -hmm. it would then need to be a second contract yeah. um, and then the timing well, of that and that's not unusual i mean that's a kind of a normal process for an architect because you don't know if you're going to ever get approval to go to full construction right. lines. and when the million dollars was uh, prognosticated by ben brainian we weren't talking about spending $100,000, up to $100,000 to remediate uh, the ball field, and we weren't talking about the the larger part of the expenses that these gentlemen have already incurred at Langen to do this additional testing. We thought at that point we were going to be doing just a phase one and a partial phase two without the complications we're looking at. So there's already a recipe in front of us for uh, Mr. Walco to be coming back to us a little short uh, on that million dollars to do what he needs to do uh, because you've incurred some expenses uh, that were anticipated when that million dollars was uh, guessed. Uh, I'm, I'm, no. I'm able to pick up the what, what we're paying our consultants on the A&E. Okay. So that's, okay. The, the remediation is, is something different we'll have but, to look I'm at. I'm sorry, is that in your capital budget? Uh, the the A&E is, the, and, and we were we were directed uh, by the by the board here to, to Pay for the additional testing out of A and E, which we which we've been doing. Yeah. Right now, the budget committee has no money, has not spent any money. Building, building, building committee, committee. And, um, and and we don't intend to spend the money until we, we get the release of you. Okay. Okay. Welcome back, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wayne, just to touch base with you. I mean, so. It seems like our understanding is yes, the applicant is the building committee. I agree with that. They will, that the budget resides within the Board of Ed, but the building committee has the right to release use of that yeah. money through the budgeting process. I agree with that also. Okay. Um, it sounds like we're getting some general consensus here that, you know, if it's a ball field that needs remediation, the building committee will probably come up with a recommendation on that. But that will probably go through, that's a, kind of a, a different item, if you will. Whereas if we find any other problems with building site D or removal of oil tanks, that's kind of under the purview of well, the building committee yeah, in itself. You know, and whoever remediates that will be figured out. But. Mark? Yes. I, yeah, I'd certainly recommend that if at all possible that some kind of structure similar to how we've handled MISA be created to, to really bifurcate the um, remediation that would be outside the construction fence or, you know, which is sort of what we did on that one, so that the building committee can focus on all the many issues to build a large, you know, complicated um, new school and that the remediation is kept separate and, and handled by the BOE or BOE in coordination yeah. with the um, DPW. Right. I, I think it's appropriate for the BOE facilities to work with town DPW and our other partners at the town to work towards marine, remediation and allow the building committee to focus on building the building. Yeah. Um, Steve, down the road, I mean, given at least the experience I remember uh, with MISA, you will, the building committee will have a interesting discussion on what form of construction management. Whether it's a construction manager, an owner's rep you might hire. It may be the general contractor who's got a maximum price type guarantee project uh, contract. That's something too that we'll have some interest because we had some interest in these on how that whole process was set up. But that's, I'm sure, something you guys will talk about. You know, the form of construction oversight, you know, for that. So. Sure, I mean, 
think we've already begun to, to talk about that a little bit. With any, any other decision like this, it's a balance. We can have several layers of oversight and, and spending well, taxpayer money with that end. And, and, and with that, yeah, not a good dollars. use of taxpayer money. On the flip side, you can have a lack of oversight or the wrong type of oversight and end up with, a, with a, not such a great product. Our job is to build the building on budget and on time within the purview of the, of the educational specs. How we get there, the town has gone through a variety of, of different processes and, and relationships from AMAP to Glenville to Mesa to Nathaniel Witherell. And I don't think one can, while some projects have gone better than others, I don't think anybody in this room can pinpoint to one specific way to handle it and say that's the perfect way to handle it. And so we're going we're gonna to continue to ask around. We have some, some good professionals on the committee. Um, and we're going to continue to, to vet sort of all of those uh, relationships and see which one best fits with this school. We'll certainly report okay. that to you. Um, it's incumbent on us to do that. I think every taxpayer deserves to know that. Yep. Uh, any hands? Okay. <clears throat> uh, any other BET members have questions on this process? I and mean, we'll be talking about this again next week. Um, Okay. Any other questions from our standpoint? Yeah. I mean, we, <clears throat> I, I don't know that we, as a as a committee, I don't know the BT as a whole, yet has a a, uh, a a consistent view of exactly what we need to know uh, uh, to be satisfied that the condition has been met for the, the results of all environmental wetland and other testing and analysis to be done, et cetera. Uh, because it seems to me that is going to be a process in which we'll have an increased number of borings, we'll have a little further information, but I don't know that we necessarily are all on the same okay. page. Well, <clears throat> I'll take a crack at responding to that, but it sounds like the building committee is coming to us looking for a release of a million dollars, is my understanding of that. Uh, we do have some conditions here. There are certainly a number of uh, soil-related conditions. I don't think we'll ever be totally satisfied in the next three or four weeks. <clears throat> In the meantime, the building committee does want to get going writing an RFP for the next architect or the current architect, the next scope, the next so uh, at what point services. are we going to so, with a million dollars? So it seems to me that we're going to want to vote as a full BET next week to release these funds so they can get going, at least from an a and &E standpoint. Okay, so is, we, it, is it appropriate for us to have a conversation, at least among the four of us, as to whether or not we as a committee are recommending the release of the funds, I, I, meaning satisfaction of that condition. I, I think it is. I mean, I think if, if some of us or all of us decide we'll wait for the full BT, or if we decide among ourselves, I mean, I'm comfortable taking a vote. At least I'll, I'll, I'm comfortable voting for the release of this. Okay. Well, so my I, so, I wasn't sure whether or not that um, we had a unity among the four of us. That's yeah, a, I mean, I, I mean mm -hmm. you can talk now or later. Well, um, uh, well, now that we're talking about it, uh, given the, all that we received in the last 24 hours from And I apologize Ron, it came so late, but it's a lot of information. Got, blew up my computer. Uh, <laughs> really appreciate, you know, I, uh, uh, that all of that came through. Uh, having Wayne here uh, to clarify a number of the legal questions was on, on my list. Um, having Ron quantify the remediation cost was also on my list. And, you know, all of this mm -hmm. is in the explanos and the um, conditions. And then, you know, just to have a better sense of what the other testing site characterization that may be done on D, and it sounds like that's underway. We may not have that by Monday, mm -hmm. but phase one didn't indicate anything in particularly risky there. And so I, I think I'm now satisfied that um, the, with the testing and the disclosure of testing that we've got. Yeah, I, I would like to um, get a better feel for what kind of progress is going to be made on the survey to um, either, you know, to place some of the easements on there, particularly the large gas pipeline, so we, you know, have some additional information on that. Do you have a timeline and what the next steps are to really, you know, right now is, I think in the words of one of our town attorneys that's been working on this, okay. he called, he said basically, you know, we own the property, but going beyond that to get, a, um, you know, some of the key things that could impact the, you know, the uh, architectural plans, such as the underground river or brook or whatever it is, the, the gas pipeline to see if it's regulated, et cetera. We have a, a little uh, more information on the gas pipeline, not as much as we would like, but. Um. 
Yes, so the, the survey, we were originally just tasked with doing a boundary survey. Um, well, I think it was an A2. The, 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 okay. yeah. okay. Correct, okay. And, and so we had uh, approximately eight days to turn it around. Uh, the actual, the, the, the bullet list and some of those emails of what needs to be added to that survey, we would absolutely do for a full site development survey, full topographic survey, um, locating the wetlands that have already been delineated, uh, locating all the, the existing structure of the school, et cetera. Um, in the timeline we were given, that was that was going to be very, very difficult. Um, seeing that the project is going to continue to proceed, we are absolutely going to work with Ron to upgrade that survey to include all of those bullet items. But has anything been flagged so far as a problem? Uh, as far as the, the biggest problems I see are around the, the ball field area uh, because of the fact that you have a paper street running through there. But if the ball field is not included in the project area for the school, it's just the southerly parcels, then uh, I don't see an issue. Um, what information survey, do you have on the gas pipeline at this point? At this point, I do not have any information on the gas pipeline. We were not able to track anything down. We were, I would like to do a full title search on the properties uh, because the town has had ownership of it for so long. Uh, it's very difficult to do title searches when there's a municipality involved. Um, so we, I'd like to order a full title search and see if anything and then there was some chatter uh, at one point about there being a water conduit of some kind that was some kind of a concern when development was being done at the library. Is there any substance to that? I, I haven't seen that. that. I do have some architectural plans from 55 when the, uh, the library was the library work was done, and I, I didn't see any evidence of that. Also, uh, walking back and forth through that ravine as we were locating the boundary along the highway, I didn't see any evidence of any head walls or any pipes uh, daylighting there. So uh, I, I have seen some of the, the figures that, that have come through. But I, again, we would have to investigate that further. But yeah. I haven't seen any support. That. What? So, so, I'm a little, so when do we expect to get more details on the survey? I mean, I, I don't know how many days that Langen had to do this, but it certainly was something that was you know, approved back in about the third week in March. And was to be part of the um, MI to be approved by the Board of Selectmen. Um, and so it's not a surprise that this is coming up. So if we were asked today to move forward with completing a more comprehensive survey, it'd probably take us two or three weeks yeah. from today? An A2, I mean, not a, not a T2 survey, but just well, the, the, the A2. The, the, if you're doing the A2, it makes sense to do the T2, because especially with the ravine back there, there's steep slopes. The topography is going to be the driving factor behind the design work that has to happen. So if we're back there locating the buildings and we have to locate some wetland flags and we're doing all that work, it's thick back there, why not do it right the first time? So we don't have to come back later and do this. So that's why I'd, I'd like to work with Ron to come up with an additional fee, which would be minimal for us to get out there and just get it completed, completed, done, and order a title search. I think that's important especially with uh, the gas line. There may not be an easement for the gas line. A gas line runs through where there was a paper street. Some of the gas company and whoever decided to, to put that gas line in when it was installed, who said, oh, this is a public street. So, you know, just because the street doesn't exist there doesn't mean it was in a subdivision map. You look on the, the GIS map for the town, that street exists. So we're talking, we're talking CNG, not the transcontinental gas line. Yeah, no, it's, it's a service line. Where it goes, so we had it marked up. Yeah. No, the transcontinental gas line is in Big Country Greenwich. It goes right across. Yeah, no, it's not, it's not uh, Algonquin or anything like that. But it, it appears to be a service line that's going to the school. We had it marked out as part of the, uh, the remediate or the, the work we did with the, the soil. The service line is going to be moved. So it's basically it stopped at the south side of the ball field. We What's need to get that marked out more, see, because it might just take a hard right, go up the hill, and then go into the school. Or does it go through the ravine and up the school? Right, but, but again, that's something we can adapt to. And yes. What's the difference between a T2 and an A2 survey? Topographic. T2 is topographic, topographic information. I got yes. you. Okay. You remember that minimal word, Rob, when you're dealing with them, okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, well, it I'll, seems to make sense to go ahead and do, yeah. you know, get a proposal and, and right. go ahead and do it. And I have a proposal for them. We okay. just do. Okay. Good. just wanted to clarify our obligations before releasing more money. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Yep. Good. All right, gentlemen. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Under uh, new business.
status of economic conditions we're, next week? We're, uh, I can give you a preliminary one. Now, we're st we haven't closed yet, uh, but where we stand right now, and keep in mind, you know, we continue to accrue revenues for 60 days and expenses that come up along the way. Uh, but uh, right now, it looks like uh, revenues are about $6.3 million over budget. And the main ones are conveyance and building permits, each one about a million. Uh, interest on delinquent taxes, uh, 700000 Low SEP money over budget, 600000 A bridge revenue is $1.6 million over. And lapsed encumbrance is $1.1 million. So we're looking at about $6.2 million of better than the budget revenues. The expenses right now look like they're going to be in a range of $8.2 million. To the good. To the good. Right. So those two together are $14.5 million. When, when we t account for the $11 million that we're using for the 15-16 budget, it gives us a net increase of between 3 and $3.5 million over where we ended last year. We ended last year at 29.3, and we should be in the range of 32.3. Sounds like a party. Okay. <coughs> okay, good. All right, so why don't we go back and uh, take some votes yeah. on the different items. Um, is, is Roland going to circulate that? If he went through it so quickly. Um, well, you'll have the report for next week. Uh, we'll have that a better one next week because we haven't even closed yet, and okay. something might sneak in. Right. Thank Speaking you. of reports, the, the monthly we used to get from the venue with all, is that going to restart? I, I should have asked yeah. that when they were here. Well, that's what I, I commented. I, I, that you know, I think they're going to come with their year-end reports in September. Okay. So, but we got a monthly, not the quarterly we did, yeah, visit I, that we were requiring. You know, one of the issues was we didn't have, uh, up until the end of March, we didn't have current salary information. Okay. And then he just, you know, Chris just started uh, okay. May. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've already, um, uh, Mr. Well, Chairman, we've already moved the, uh, the, the executive session litigation. Okay. We voted on that. Uh, I, I would propose that that be non-routine just because it's a litigation. Okay. We, we might have taken that up. I might have had that conversation before, but we didn't. Okay. But, um, but we've seen it before. We've had... Um, sessions, executive sessions with the BET. This was just the final response yeah, on our guidelines. I, I think this can be non this can be routine and then okay. if, if Mike chooses to make it non routine. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, you're talking about the settlement. The settlement. The settlement. Yeah. The settlement. Yeah. Yeah. Just a routine, I, 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 I think it's well, I have no objection. It can I mean, be routine. Well I think generally I mean we'll go into executive session next week and I'll just give the report of you know, so it's not a big I mean deal. generally Settlement of litigation, we've never marked routine. We've yeah, because, no, I agree. because it, re it required a conversation and a vote. So uh, would HD1 be routine? I would call HD1 routine for sure, but it's going to become the only routine item I have a feeling. Yeah. So do you want to make a motion? Mark. Yeah, I, yeah, hold on. When you get past uh, HD1, I want to stop you. There's some slight changes. Okay. Okay. Um, I would propose that HD1 be r routine, and I would move that the item be approved. Second. Am I doing what you want me to do? Yep. Yeah. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now you want it to stop us now. And, and NW1 is going to be reclassified as a prior year change. It's not the current year. And NW1 is going to become uh, NW7. It will be f reflected on the BET uh, agenda. NW2 is going to become NW1, which is the current year. Okay. And we'll, we'll label that like we've done in the past. Okay. okay. That's the only changes. And, they, and we, we reflect the change, uh, Leslie <coughs> noted, the 580 will become 585. So I would propose that NW7 uh, at 585,000 uh, be first non-routine, and then after that I'll move the approval of the item. But for right now I'm moving that it be non-routine. Am I doing well, what just, you want no, to do? Just put it into your... Okay, into I'm, your I'm proposing that this, that this be non-routine and that we approve the item. Second. At 585. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's 4 0. Uh, on the next item, which now is be being called NW1, uh, I would uh, propose that this it be called non routine, and I propose, uh, I move that we approve the item. Any other? Second? Second. Uh, any other discussion on that? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, uh, assist me, Mr. Chairman, if you would. I, I think we're, we're now going to handle. 
uh, the release of conditions uh, and to bring this up for a vote, which is a release of conditions on $1 million. Do we mark those, yeah. a release of conditions as routine or not? Do we normally, how do we handle that? Is that a separate item usually in the agenda? Well, we need a blue sheet is, on this? You know, yes. We'll have a blue sheet for, for next week's meeting. We'll, for, we just told Steve we're going to draft it for him. Okay. And okay. it'll be, and it'll be a blue sheet for a release of conditions on $1 million. It'll be yeah, ED1. So we need to indicate whether or not it's routine or non routine. Oh, it should be non routine. Yeah, yeah of course it is. But I just want to know if, if one gives it those classifications. All right, so it'll be called ED1. So in your motion, why don't you. Okay, so I'm going to call this ED1. And I'm going to propose then that we call ED1 uh, non routine. And I'm moving the approval of the release of conditions, $1 million. Okay, so I will second that. But I, I do have a conversation point. Do we actually approve release of conditions, or do we re recommend to the full BET? We recommend, recommend to the full BET. Did do so I, again, I second that. OK. And, and uh, I, I would gladly adopt that rephrasing. OK. OK. Um, so any, any discussion on that item? All those in uh, favor? Uh, oh. Sorry. I mean, I, I would, since it was a requirement under the um, release of conditions, I would like that in September or when available, or when available, that they send a copy of the survey to the Budget Committee, BET. Um, you know, if we can, in, in communications, um, Pete and Roland can share that. Okay. I would. Um, for what it's worth, um, although we have an item which says, and any other information or analysis requested by the BET, and indeed in dialogue we did ask for a survey, although we used the expression A2 rather than T2, um, but otherwise um, survey or uh, was not one of the explicit conditions back when we approved these conditions to be. But it with. was part of a very pr explicit it's part the of the explanos. Yeah. Okay. It's very clearly in the explanos, okay. and it was part of right, a lengthy enough. discussion. But we're not suggesting a condition on those conditions. No, no <laughs> we're just asking Pete and Roland to convey this, and that when it's available, that it be circulated back okay. to well, us. Plenty of time to. Okay. Okay. So there's a motion. All right, so there's a motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Okay, so that's four zero. Yeah. And Pete and Roland, you got that? Three minutes. <coughs> our next item is approval of our June 9th I would minutes. I would move the approval of the June 9th minutes as proposed. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I will obtain a motion for adjournment. I'd make that motion too. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, thank you very much.